that a capital gains tax would send New Zealand, quote, screaming backwards, or that, quote, we actually have a capital gains tax in New Zealand. The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, both statements are correct. <laughs> Tax, ca tax, is tax is paid on some capital gains in New Zealand, and the members' tax package, uh, or the members' package of big spending, more taxes, and more debt, would see New Zealand screaming backwards. The Honourable David Cundiff. Mr. Speaker, did the introduction of a capital gains tax in Australia in 1985 send Australia screaming backwards, or did Australia's GDP per capita begin to grow much faster than New Zealand's from that point? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, it's a, a probably stretching the bow a bit, even for the member. Um, the, I'm not familiar with what actually happened when it was introduced in, in Australia. What I do know is that one of the reasons the Australian economy performed better over the last 10 years is because they had better spending restraint, better tax reform uh, and better microeconomic policy. And that's when that member was in government. The Honourable David Speaker, Mr Speaker, does the Minister support Labor's $5,000 tax-free zone that delivers a net income tax reduction for 98 per cent of income earners? And if not, why not? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, no, but that, and that is part of a package I understand Labor are uh, proposing, which in involves a big increase in government spending, new taxes and more borrowing when the economy needs exactly the opposite to get on its feet, to grow and to lift incomes. Mr. Michael Speaker. Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Who would be the losers from a partial and poorly designed capital gains tax? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, there is quite a long list of them, actually. Nor pretty well anyone who benefits from productive investment. So 1.6 million... 1.6 million Kiwi savers would face increased taxes on gains on their investment. 500,000 businesses who would have to get their operations valued for tax purposes and then keep track of it through their lifetimes. Interestingly, property traders would actually get a cut in capital gains tax because they currently pay at 33 cents in the dollar and under the Labor package, people who trade in property would pay only 15 cents on their capital gains. Our point of order. 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 A point of order has been called. The point of order, Mr Cundiff. Speaker, I, I hesitate to interrupt my own flow of supplementaries, but the misrepresentation in that uh, reply was just so extraordinary. Our order. package no, no. does not order. include... No, no. Order. Order. I, uh, the, the more valid point of order would have been that the, pri the, the minister should not be commenting on, on Labor Party policies for the risk of, of, misrepresentation. of misrepresentation indeed. And I, uh, I, it's, a, it's an extraordinarily difficult thing to try and referee because the question wasn't out of order and the, and the minister was being very careful till the last minute there. But I do ask members, members can see how the House gets into disorder, how, the, how difficult it gets when when members try to encourage ministers to comment on other parties' policies because they have no responsibility for them. Uh, the, Point of order. the Honourable David Parker. Uh, Mr Speaker, I seek leave to table the question and answer produced at the time of the release of our capital gains tax, which shows that the tax treatment of traders on property would not result in a reduction order. of taxes for them. Order. I take it this is a document prepared by the Labor Party? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, it was our policy. Order. <laughs> Order. Leave is sought to table that document. Is there any objection? There is objection. Order. Question number. The Honourable David Parker. Supplementary question. Minister of Finance, does he agree with Labor that the tax system should be designed to minimise harmful impacts on growth? And if so, has he seen this graph from the Treasury? showing that a capital gains tax is better for the economy than income tax. The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, I do agree with the member that tax systems should be designed so they don't have a detrimental impact on growth. And that's why I find it hard to understand why he's just released a package that will have exactly a detrimental impact on growth. The Honourable David Cunliffe. 
Mr Speaker, given his belief that a comprehensive capital gains tax is the right thing to do, will he be proposing a capital gains tax that includes the family home, or will he stick with his current tax settings, which the tax working group he set up calls, quote, deeply flawed, inequitable and inefficient, close quote? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, that's not correct. The tax working group followed the same logic as followed the same logic as a lot of people, and that is the experts start out saying a comprehensive capital gains tax is a good idea, then they have to come up with exemptions like people over the age of 55, the family home, uh, some classes of shares, uh, and, ver and tra property speculators and so on, and they end up with a tax so complicated they don't implement it. And that member has produced a package which is about bigger government spending, higher taxes and more debt, and that's bad for the economy. Well, Mr. Speaker, Point of order, the Honourable David I Cunningham. seek leave to table the Tax Working Group report which described current tax settings as deeply oh, order, flawed, order, inequitable order, no, no, and order. I mean, all members have had uh, that available to them. The Tax Working Group report is available to all members. Uh, Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable David Cunningham. Mr. Speaker, I seek leave to table this graph from IMF data, which shows the percentage gap between Australia and New Zealand GDP order. per capita increasing. Was a member tell the House tax who's prepared Australia. the graph? The uh, source is the IMF, and the data was graphed by my research unit. By? By the Labor Research Unit. Ah. Leave us sought to table that document prepared by the Labor Research Unit. Is there any objection? There is objection. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable David Mr Cunliffe. Speaker, I seek to table this graph prepared order. by the New Zealand Treasury, which uh, shows the growth effects of taxes and public expenditures, saying that an income tax is generally worse for the economy than a capital gains tax. Would the member identify the document it came yes, from? Yes, it's sourced from the Treasury. It's part of the Tax Working Group background papers of their website, sir. It's it's one of the from order order a point of order is being considered. Both sides, please. Leave us sort to table that document from a, a working pa a, a paper prepared for the tax working group. Is there any objection? There is objection. Really? There is objection. Well, question supplementary question, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary question to question six, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, in light of the Prime Minister's statement that we actually have a capital gains tax in New Zealand, what is the current list of exemptions from that tax? The Honourable Bill English. <laughs> Mr Speaker, uh, the member uh, can look up the Tax Act if he wants to see exactly how it applies. But what I can tell you is that the, the package of measures which involve bigger government spending, order, order, new taxes order, and order, more debt order. is bad for the economy. Now I asked the Minister why I shouldn't actually ask him to leave the House because he clearly saw me on my feet and was determined. The question asked was a fair question, in fact, asking the Minister of Finance what the exemptions were from the existing capital gains tax. That is actually a fair question, and the House could perhaps expect the Minister of Finance to know that. Now, to then climb into the Labor Party, claim to answer it by way of talking about the Labor Party's policy when I'm on my feet is actually Unacceptable, totally. Now, if the, you know, I, 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 I give them a minute because I, I, there are other questions. There are not any other questions. I'll ask the Minister of Finance to leave the house. <laughs> Members, ministers will learn when I'm on my feet. If I'm to stop an abuse of of question time, uh, some questions I. Don't mind ministers climbing in because the question contains political assertions where they deserve anything they get. But that was a straight question, asking the Minister of Finance what the exceptions were or exemptions were to the current capital gains tax. And to be answered that way is, is not acceptable. And I, I just warn all members of the House that uh, we're heading towards a difficult time of the year. Uh, we, I know that. I'm not stupid. But we have to keep this House operating effectively. Supplementary, Supplementary question, the Honourable. Well, the Minister is now no longer in the House. Well, it has no, to be I, order. no order. I, I, in considering the matter, I looked at whether there were any more questions to the Minister and determined there weren't any. And no one, no one, uh, no one uh, indicated to me that that was wrong. Had there been any indication or further questions, I would not have asked him to leave the House. So the Member can't win twice. Uh, 
Point of order is at the Honourable Tohenere.